Sir. My name is Michael Moria. CCSD has offered the following explanation as to why it is necessary to coerce half of their staff into taking experimental drugs, forcing them to choose between their health and their livelihoods. One, other agencies are attempting to do it, so it's common sense that we do it too. This is shocking and ill-informed reasoning. Other agencies are creating toxic work environments by attempting to coerce their staff into taking an experimental drug with liability protections for the drug companies and uh, federal government. This is not a common sense course of action. For every agency attempting to do this, hundreds are not. Two, to protect children under 12. Is the board aware that, that vaccines do not prevent infection or transmission? If being fully vaccinated against COVID-19 does not prevent transmitting the virus to others, then what is the point of a vaccine mandate? If the board is aware of this fact, then you must vote no, because mandate does not prevent the spread to children under age 12. Is the, if the board was not aware of this fact, then you must vote no, because you do not have sufficient information to cast an informed vote. Does the board realize that you're threatening the livelihood of thousands of families without adequate explanation? We're not going to take this lying down. We will defeat this mandate in court. We will pick at your places of business, and we'll see how you like it when your livelihoods are threatened. We will unseat you. It will be easy to portray you as the wannabe tyrants that you are. I envision billboards with, with all of you in Nazi uniforms, plunging a giant needle into one of our beautiful young pregnant teachers. Are you beginning to understand, stupid people? Do you? Do you think you're incapable of thinking and making your own decisions doing research? Because we've all been locked at home for a year, and a lot of people have done a lot of research. We have found out that COVID is not dangerous. Unless you're 80 years old, huge, and have two lung cancers. Not many people come under that category. What was dangerous was not getting the medicines. Dr. Uh, Stella Emanuel treated 2,000 COVID patients, didn't lose one. She used hydroxychloroquine, which a sissy sack banned. A telemarketer banned medicine from doctors to use. Who the heck do you people think you are? I'm going to say something to you. There is a law out there about what you're trying to mandate, which is not a law. Mandates are not a law. But the Nuremberg Code says you can't tell people to take a jab. You can't force medicine down people or treatments. You're going to all go to a court and be hung. If you think you're going to do that to us, your employers, you're going to be taken to court and hung. There's a doctor in Hawaii, 45,000 deaths from this COVID vaccine in 72 hours. Do you think we're all stupid? Are your teachers dumb? Do they need you to tell them how to live? You have no right. You're overstepping your rights and you better vote no. Your names are going to be on this vote. You're going to be easily found by the Nuremberg Code people. You're going to be on record. That's a jazz hands check, isn't it? Uh, no, I think she's still in the audience, yeah. I'm Amy Keller for the record. I'm here this afternoon to speak on 3.05 public comment at board meetings. I was already planning on coming this afternoon, but was not aware this would be on the item for a possible action, which I understand it's been removed, but I just go ahead and give you my comments for the record. Um, the agenda didn't give any further mention about what you're proposing or what changes you're going to be making, so I'm just going to give you some gen my general feeling about it. Um, according to the Court of Appeals ruling cited in the Nevada Open Meeting Law Manual, it states, the people of this state do not yield their sovereignty to the agencies which serve them. The people, in delegating authority, do not give their public servants the right to decide what is good for the people to know and what is not good for them to know. The people insist on remaining informed so that they may re remain, retain control over instruments they have created. This really goes to the heart of why I'm here today. I'm here in the cause of freedom. Freedom for people to act. And, in this case, freedom of information. We, the people, are the government. We are the school, di school board, as you are elected to represent us. The public's freedom of speech during public meetings is vigorously protected by both the U.S. Constitution and the Nevada Constitution. Freedom of expression upon public questions is secured by the First Amendment. This constitutional safeguard was fashioned to assure an unfettered interchange of ideas for bringing about political and social changes desired by the people. I love that, and it really resonated with me when I read it. I'm going to state it again. An unfettered interchange of ideas for bringing about political and social changes. As we have seen repeated over and over this past year, reasonable people will disagree. But in order to disagree, there must be a discourse. I implore you to not make changes that will decrease the amount of public information and the interchange of ideas between us and you. The record, Bonnie Taylor, and this would have been for agenda item 3.05.
I'm standing here wondering why anyone would want to silence the voice of the people. But then I remember our voices have been silenced by the media, government entities, and those who just assume they have the power to do so. The First Amendment still stands in this country. This is the freedom we have to speak. The fact that you aren't even reading the emails or playing voicemail messages of those that want to be heard at the meetings, but instead of putting them in the public record, speaks volumes for how you feel about freedom of speech. Does it get uncomfortable? Yes. Does it get loud and rowdy? Yes. If that makes you uncomfortable, so be it. But it is not a reason to silence anyone's voice. It also doesn't justify only allowing those emails and voicemails to just go into public record and not be heard. Your comfort is not as important as the First Amendment. I'm pretty sure you will not silence we the people, but only increase the volume in many outlets that will be taken. I'm pretty sure you will not stop us re stop us from removing you from office. That ball is already rolling. You can't stop what's coming. We will be heard. Whatever you vote or decide, in the future, we will be heard. And as said by the soldiers from World War II and President Kennedy, where we go one, we go all. God bless the United States of America, and to God be the glory. On silencing people, New York Times versus Sullivan, 1964. Let's see here. Writing for the majority, Justice William J. Brennan Jr. opined that debate in public if, on public issues, oh, I'm sorry, opined that, quote, Debate on public issues should be uninhibited, robust, and wide open, unquote. And that vehement criticism and even mistakes were part of the price of a democratic society must pay for freedom. Or the law of the Supreme Court, you can be criticized individually, no matter what you put down for the rules. That is a violation of the First Amendment. President Cavazos, Trustee Superintendent Jara. For the record, my name is Maria Nysa, CCA President. As the only educator union recognized by CCSD that represents over 18,000 educators, we ask that you meet with us to discuss the possibility of a vaccine mandate. This school year has been hampered by the many challenges educators face during the pandemic. Our concern is the district's ability to put a vaccine mandate in place effectively. Dr. Jara's COVID testing mandate rollout was a disaster. Educators are demanding to know Dr. Jara's plan for the possible negative impact due to a number of educators and staff who have stated they will quit if the vaccine is mandated. The current educator and substitute shortage continues to put educators and students at risk at the increasingly larger class sizes. Classrooms that are without a teacher or substitute continue to be divided up amongst other classrooms. Unfortunately, keeping students safe through social distancing becomes impossible. If student outcomes are a priority, we need to have a plan in place that addresses the educator shortage, which will continue to escalate as their workloads and working conditions worsen. We are a member-led organization, and as such, we have heard from many of our members. While educators have strong opinions on the vaccine mandate, it is crystal clear that, the safety, that safety is their number one priority outside of educating our students. In this, we stand united. We strongly believe there are solutions and ask that our organizations meet before any policy or mandate is implemented. We believe this is a subject of bargaining and is, it would impact workload and working conditions. It should you, it is trustee, not a subject for bargaining. Hard questions of Dr. Jara. On it's the a simple just fact they raised. cannot tell somebody what they can do with their own to mind, you to support period. This. Before you vote to support, bargaining. you should have those These answers so you can defend your position to the public and staff. To be clear, we support all efforts to make our school staff and students as safe as possible, including vaccines, but the unintended... Thank you. 1,000 signatures and 800 comments your constituents graciously took the time to submit over the past four days when I'm finished. They are absolutely overwhelming to read, and the universal theme is that they do not consent. As the Board of Trustees, you swore under oath to support, protect, and defend the Constitution and government of the United States. The right to inform consent is a fundamental overriding principle of medical ethics made law under the Code of Federal Regulations. Medical mandates have no place in our free society, and they have no place in our schools. A legally protected part of informed consent is that it must be voluntary and without coercion or duress. Employees in all se sectors of CCSD are under extreme duress over choosing between their personal health concerns and the loss of a profession that they are passionate about. You've seen the comments. I've sent them to each of you. They're absolutely heart-wrenching. The reasons are distinctly varied, be it medical, religious, natural antibodies, safety concerns, privacy concerns, medical advice, the list goes on and on. They do not consent. Consent is not transferable. If you consent to one vaccine or protocol, it does not mean you're agreeing to another. Autonomy matters. Individual experiences and medical outcomes legally must be protected. Please, stand up for your staff that you so desperately need, and in doing so, stand up for your students. You swore under oath to ensure that every student in every classroom achieves success. This is not possible without all of your CCSD educators and staff. You can't do it without them. 
This isn't about being pro or anti anything. This is about the freedom to choose what is best for one's own body. Vote against giving the authority to mandate and start focusing your policy on education. Vote no and together let's get these priorities in order. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lawrence. The COVID vaccine that you guys are trying to man mandate is an experimental vaccine. I think most of us can agree that it has not gone through the correct channels of testing, nor properly gone through the FDA. And now you're trying to mandate it on our hardworking teachers who deserve better than this. We've had teachers and staff that have worked for the, the district majority of their lives, who've put their heart and soul into these careers for their children, for you, and for many of them, this is their main source of income and support for themselves and their families. And you're about to throw it away by stripping their constitutional rights and our rights, our medical privacy and discrimination towards anyone who chooses not to get it. I think you need to start listening to the people in the audience and the people that are on social media that are speaking out and going to the schools, talking to the parents and teachers, talking to the staff. Whether they have it or not, they don't agree with this mandate. It's not okay. It's not ready to be mandated, and it should be a right. Whether it's religious, whether it's safety reasons, it should be their right. And what's next? Our children? I know you said, Chara, that it, this is not about the children yet, but that's what will be coming next. This room will be ten times more packed, and so will that parking lot if this is where it goes. You will have no staff left. You will have nobody who will want to work for you guys because you're not working together because you decide, not us. We pay for your salary. We make the decision as parents. And respectively, I hope that you will take that into consideration. Otherwise, you're going to be voted out. We served this community in the Clark County School District for 21 years as an educator and school librarian. And I love my job. The last 18 months have been challenging for all of us. In March of 2020, my colleagues and I were directed to work from home and go into uncharted territory with distance learning. I did. I was asked to prepare and deploy technology for students. I did. August of 2020, I was directed to go back to the building to teach. I did. November 2020, I was told to go back home and provide online learning. I did. March 2021, I was told to return to the building. I went. I was asked to wear a mask. I did. This August, I was asked to do weekly COVID testing, even though I already had COVID and have natural immunity. And I have. This is not about pro-vaccine or anti-vaccine. This is about personal medical choice. If this mandate is approved, I will be told to set aside my beliefs, concerns, and medical history. I will be asked to allow this board to make a decision for me regarding a vaccine that lacks long-term data and to give up medical choice in order to keep my job. Last Friday, the CDC released data that shows during the last seven months, a total of 623,343 adverse reactions to the COVID-19 vaccine were reported, including over 13,000 deaths. When you take that kind of risk, it should be your choice. Teachers and staff should be protected to make their own decisions. If you mandate, this is no longer a choice. Once we comply, what's next? New mandates, mandatory testing, and COVID vaccines for students? This has gone too far. I am begging you, do not approve this mandate. Do not ask your teachers and staff to give up medical choice to continue working with the children and families of this community. Do not make me decide between this career that I love and have poured my heart into for medical freedom. Please do not approve this mandate. Thank you. I have given 25 years to the district as a support staff member. I have a bachelor's degree in journalism and a master's degree in temperament and pastoral counseling. I chose this career, actually the Lord has placed me in this career, so that I could dedicate myself to the students, to love them and to pour into them. However, I'm now having to give a choice because you are deciding to mandate something that I do not agree with. I have natural immunities, which in That's Israel, right. in the study that they just released, so they said I. that I have 13 times the immunities, 13 times what the COVID shot or EUA has. And so I have decided I don't need the EUA. The CDC has said that this EUA unfortunately, has killed more than any other vaccine has done. Remember the Nuremberg Code? Yeah. That was introduced in 1947 and is still in place. That says that we will not be forced to take anything into our bodies that we do not choose to put into our bodies. What I remember is that we live in a country where the Constitution is upheld. The word mandate does not belong in our vocabulary in the United States. That's right. When it comes to our freedom.